Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at this Sigma 70-200 F2.8 DGDN OS. This is the first 70-200 F2.8 lens from Sigma designed for mirrorless cameras. This lens is available for the Leica L mount as well as the Sony E mount. The sample I received is the Sony E mount and I'm testing it using the 61 megapixel Sony A7CR. The optical design of the lens is the same for the E mount and the L mount. 20 elements in 15 groups including 6 FLDs, 2 SLDs and 3 aspherical elements. So the image quality should be identical for these two versions. However, there are a few differences between these two versions that you need to be aware of and I'll explain to you later on in this review. The Sigma 70-200 2.8 DN OS is part of Sigma's sports lineup. It means this lens is designed for shooting sports and actions and suitable for professional users. It is a pretty big lens as you would expect. The weight of this lens is 1335 gram, which is quite a lot lighter than its predecessor Sigma 70-200. DGOS HSM, which is just over 1,800 gram. But it is still quite a heavy lens. When I mount it on my A7CR, it feels very fun heavy. But to be fair, it's more a problem of the camera I use. If you want a smaller lens, then you should look at the Tamron 70 to 180, which I have also reviewed on this channel a while ago. That lens is quite a bit smaller, but more importantly, it only weighs 810 grams, so it's just about half the weight of the Sigma lens. But the Tamron doesn't have optical image stabilizer, it has a shorter maximum focal length, and also the build quality of the Tamron is a lot more plasticky than this Sigma lens. This Sigma lens feels much more solid, more like what a professional lens would be. Another reason why the Tamron is quite a bit lighter is that the Tamron doesn't have a built-in tripod mount while this Sigma lens has. Having a good solid tripod mount is very important for bigger lenses like this Sigma as it allows you to mount the camera on the tripod where the center of gravity is so it will make it more stable. The tripod mount is rotatable and it has soft clicks every 90 degrees. The mount is also Arca Swiss compatible and it feels very solid. However, probably because Sigma wants the tripod mount to be as solid as possible, if you want to remove the tripod mount, it's not easy at all. You need to remove the four screws on the mount, so it's not really a design that you want to remove or install the tripod mount regularly. Since I was mostly shooting with this lens without a tripod, so for me, I just rotate the mount so that the tripod mount is at the top, so it doesn't get in the way how I hold the camera. I can also just place the camera on the desk easily. It is a weather resistance lens. There are multiple weather seals on the lens body. The front element has a special coating that helps repel water and oil. This is an internal zoom lens, so the length of the lens doesn't change at all when you zoom in or zoom out. The zoom ring is at the very front of the lens. I know some people don't really like this design and they prefer to have the zoom ring closer to the camera body. I myself, I don't really mind. Having the zoom ring at the front means you do have to extend your arm a bit when you are shooting as your hand is almost always placed on the zoom ring. That's probably why some people don't like it. But because it is a telephoto lens, so placing the hand at the front of the lens means any movements from your left hand would have a smaller impact to where the camera points to. It means the camera will be more stable so it's a trade-off between how easy is it to hold the lens and how stable the camera is. So that's why I said I don't really mind having the zoom ring at the front. The zoom ring turns very smoothly and quite easily as well. 
The lens comes with a pretty big reversible lens hood, which provides good physical and lens flare protection. But there are a few things I don't really like. Well, first thing, there is a screw on the lens hood for you to lock the lens hood onto the lens. So the lens hood would be very secure once you tighten up the screw. But it does take quite a bit of time to install or remove the lens hood compared to other lenses that the lens hood you just turn and click. And once you install the lens hood, the lens hood overlap and blocks the zoom ring quite a bit. So the zoom ring become a bit narrower. I keep thinking I installed the lens hood incorrectly or backward, but no, the lens hood is installed correctly. It's quite a weird design. The lens has three AFL buttons that is also customizable. There are a total of six switches on the lens. Yes, six switches, that's a lot. One for the AF-MF, one is the focus limiter, one is the optical image stabilizer, one is for the custom mode. There's also a click-de-click -click switch for the aperture ring, and then there is a lock switch to lock the aperture ring in the A position if you want to. Yes, this lens has an aperture ring. This is the first photo zoom lens from Sigma that has an aperture ring. The aperture ring feels very nice and I really like the fact that you can have the aperture ring that has clicks or you can de-click it very easily using the switch on the lens. So overall, this Sigma lens is exactly what I would expect for a professional lens. It feels solid, it's very tough, it's weather sealed, it has all the features. Unfortunately, it's also big and heavy like most professional lenses. This lens has a built-in optical image stabilizer. Sigma claims it is 7.5 stops effective at the wide end and 5.5 stop at the telephoto end. I really like that Sigma specified the rating on both ends instead of just give us a single maximum rating. So I did my usual test to see how many stops of image stabilization I can get when shooting real world photos. So I've shot a few hundred photos at 200mm focal length using the Sony A7CR at different shutter speed with and without image stabilization. My results show the image stabilization is about 4 stops effective at 200mm focal length, which is one of the best results I got at 200mm focal length. What is also really impressive is that I got 100% sharp photos when I'm shooting at 1/30th second shutter speed with the 61 megapixel A7CR. It means I could confidently shoot at that shutter speed at 200mm focal length and I can still expect to get sharp photo as long as my subject doesn't move quickly. While optically the L mount and the E mount version are identical, there are a few differences between these two versions. With the L mount version, you can use the optional USB dock UD11 to customize the focus limiter and set the different custom profiles. Elman users can also use the Sigma 1.4 and 2x teleconverters. Eman version doesn't support any of this. When shooting with Sony cameras, the maximum burst speed is limited to 15 frames per second if you have continuous autofocus enabled. This is the same for all the third party Eman lenses. 15 frames per second is pretty fast to be honest. But if you're shooting with cameras like the Sony A1, which can shoot much faster than that, then you need to be aware of this. There's no such limitation on the Elman version. So yeah, if you are a Elman user, then you are a little bit more lucky as you get access to all these features and the higher burst speed that the Elman users will miss out. This lens uses the dual HLA motor for autofocus. HLA stands for High Response Linear Actuator. This is the new high-speed autofocus motor from Sigma. When shooting during daytime, the autofocus speed is pretty much instant. It's very fast and very quiet as well. Accuracy is not a problem, even when I place the autofocus point right at the edge or corner of the photo. Okay, now let's look at the image sharpness. 
and will start at 70mm focal length. Zoom into the center at 200% zoom. Even though this is a 61 megapixel photo, so it's pretty demanding, the center is amazingly sharp at f2.8 already. Because it's so sharp at f2.8, so stopping down the lens makes no difference to the center sharpness. Well, until you reach f16 when diffraction is starting to soften up the image. Corner sharpness is also very good at 70mm focal length. While at f2.8 it's not as sharp as the center, it is still very usable. At f5.6, the corner sharpness becomes excellent. Focus at the center or focus at the corner of the photo makes no difference to the corner sharpness, which suggests the lens has very minimal field curvature at 70mm focal length. At 200mm focal length, the center is quite sharp at f2.8, but you can improve the center sharpness by stopping down the lens a little bit. At f5.6, the center sharpness is excellent. Okay, now let's look at the corner. At f2.8, the corner sharpness is already very good and it will gradually improve as you stop down the lens. Once again, focus at the center or focus at the corner makes very minimal difference to the corner sharpness. So it means this Sigma lens just doesn't have too much field curvature, no matter it's at the wide angle or the telephoto end. With this Sigma 70 to 200 mm f2.8 lens, the maximum magnification ratio is 0 0.19 times, and this is achieved at 200 mm focal length, the telephoto end. This is a great thing in my opinion because it allows you to have a longer distance between the front of the lens and the subject so you don't need to get too close to your subject. In this case, you have around 80 cm or just over 30 inches between the front of the lens and your subject. The image sharpness when taking photo at the minimum focus distance is excellent. This photo I shot at f2.8, 200mm focal length at the minimum focus distance and it's sharp, it's very sharp. It's so sharp that stopping down the lens doesn't actually improve the sharpness. Okay, now let's talk about bokeh. Bokeh looks pretty present with this lens. I don't see any onion ring and I also don't see any highlight at the edge of the bokeh balls. The dissolved background usually looks nice and smooth. Bokeh balls remains round even when you stop down the lens thanks to its 11 round aperture brace. There is a bit of cat's eye bokeh when shooting at the maximum aperture. It seems to be more noticeable when you're shooting at the telephoto end. Stopping down the lens to around f4 or f5.6 would get rid of the cat's eye bokeh. In terms of vignetting, if we enable vignetting compensation, at the wide end 70mm, there is a small amount of vignetting at f2.8, much better at f4, and it becomes not really noticeable at f8. At 200mm, there is almost no vignetting visible even at f2.8. And now if we disable vignetting compensation, at f2.8, there is some noticeable light fall off near the corner at both 70mm and 200mm focal length. It becomes much better at f4, but you need to stop down to around f8 to completely get rid of any vignetting. Okay, next, let's talk about chromatic aberration. And I think this lens has excellent chromatic aberration control. Look at this photo of this pigeon I shot at 200mm focal length. The pigeon was completely backlit, but I see pretty much no color fringing at all, so that is really good. And now this photo shot at 70mm. Again, another super high contrast photo, but there's almost no color fringing at all. And if you look at this local test photo shot at 200mm focal length at f2.8, there is almost no chromatic aberration at all. So overall, chromatic aberration control is really excellent with this Sigma lens. 
Here are two photos I shot at 70mm focal length. The left one is without distortion compensation and the right one is with distortion compensation. With distortion compensation, there is virtually no distortion visible. But even without distortion compensation, the amount of distortion is still quite minimal. At 200mm focal length, with distortion compensation, I don't see any distortion at all. And without distortion compensation, now I see some pink cushion distortion. A little bit more than what I expect at 200mm to be honest, but it can be easily corrected manually even if you haven't enabled lens profile distortion compensation. Lens ray control is very decent with this Sigma 70 to 200mm lens. There is very minimal amount of lens flare and ghosting even when there is a strong light source in front of the camera. Occasionally, I see a tiny amount of purple-ish lens flare close to a very bright light source like when I'm shooting directly into the sun, but that's pretty much the worst I can get in terms of lens flare. So overall, lens flare control is up to Sigma's usual standard. Stopping down the lens slightly to f4, we can see a little bit of sun stars, but it is not very sharp. If we stop down the lens further, at around f11, sun stars become much sharper. At the minimum aperture f22, the tails of the sun stars are now long and sharp. I think the sun stars from this Sigma lens can be quite beautiful, but you do really have to stop down to around f16 or f22 to get some very sharp and nice looking sun stars. When shooting video with this Sigma lens, the autofocus transition is very smooth and the autofocus operation is also very quiet. Focus breathing is extremely well controlled, both at the 70mm wide end and the 200mm telephoto end, the lens has very minimal amount of focus breathing when I shift the focus between 1 meter to 10 meter. So that is very impressive. And I mentioned before the aperture ring can be declicked easily using the switch on the lens. So all in all, this is an excellent lens for videographers as well. Sometimes it gets a bit boring when you review a lens that is just very good and there's not much that you can complain about. And this is pretty much the case with this Sigma lens. Optically, this lens is very good. Apart from having a bit of cat's eye bokeh at f2.8 and some vignetting, especially if you disable the profile correction, there's not much that I can really complain about its image quality. Autofocus, image stabilization also works very well. This lens feels very solid and it has all the features that I would like to see. It is not a light lens. I guess in terms of design, it's the lens hood that I feel could be improved a bit and maybe make it a bit easier to remove the tripod mount. But that's pretty much all I can complain about this lens. So overall, it is just another very solid release by Sigma and the price is also very attractive. If you are a Sony shooter, then you need to be aware of there are a few limitations that I mentioned earlier on in this review, like the 15 frames per second maximum burst speed with continuous autofocus and not able to use any of the teleconverter. But if you are a Elman user, then you are more lucky as you can enjoy the same image quality but without any of these restrictions.